Hello, hello again, everyone. This is Jan from New York City, and my channel name is Jan from New York City Saves Money. I am always so super stoked to talk about success stories, and that's the name of my new show. And this is episode two. Last week, we had on Lisa Miller. This week, it's going to be Steve Young, which many of you know already, who, by the way, has his own channel. But we'll talk further about that when I get back in about eight to 10 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna pull up Steve. Hi, Steve, how are you? Hi, um, I'm good, how are you today? Good, so nice to see you. You too. We're going to share Steve's story of his success with weight loss. But before I begin that, I just want to mention that this show is not always about weight loss success stories. It just happens to be. Some of the success stories might be about financial things or business things or other topics. But this time, it just happens to be about weight loss. I'm going to get right to it with Steve. Steve, to the mm -hmm. best of your knowledge, what was your, if you don't mind telling us, your highest weight? The highest that I ever, that I weighed uh, would be 321 pounds. Okay. Back in, and that was back in um, March of 2004. Okay. Mm -hmm. And to what, let's say, what bad eating or drinking habit possibly do you think may have contributed or brought you to that number in weight? Well, I do know that back in those days, you know, up through the time I was about 29 or 30, when my life, you know, suddenly changed, I, um, I, I didn't care about what I ate. I mean, I really didn't. If it was fried potatoes, if it was you know, and any kind of sweets, junk food, I would eat, you know, I didn't know when to cut myself off. If I ate a bag of potato chips, I would just keep eating, eating and eating and eating. Like I said, fried potatoes, um, you know, a lot of greasy foods, again, deep fried. It just didn't matter what it was. And another thing that was a contributor to that was also Soda. I used to drink three liters of Coke a day. Yes, I would eat something sweet and I would have to drink cola or a Coke right behind it. Um, Coke, Pepsi, it didn't matter any type of cola, even your Sprite and your 7-Ups because it's still high sugar. Um, you know, I, but I truly believe the biggest thing though, over and above, not just the food itself, soda was a biggest contributor of weight gain for me. And I feel that it is a weight inhibitor for anybody that drinks any type of soda. Um, I didn't do diet soda. Diet soda is even worse than the regular because of all the artificial sweeteners and preservatives and things that they put in it, but that's another, another show altogether in that case. But, but the soda was the worst for me. And then, like I said, I, I gave that up on March 29th, 2004. I wow. gave it up. I don't, I won't touch anything. So uh, the only thing soda that I might touch now is if it's, it's gotta be zero calories, like a seltzer water or club soda you know, something that doesn't have any sugar in it, that I'll drink or Perrier or, um, but no, sodas are gone in my life. I have no need for them. Uh, plus it makes your body feel a hundred percent better. And I want to throw this in, if I may, about Coke, Pepsi, RC, any type of cola or caramel color based soda. Phosphoric acid. What that does is it depletes your body of calcium. 
So not only are you drinking soda, oh, it's good, it's refreshing, it tastes good. You're also zapping yourself of calcium at the same time. I found that out a little bit later on. I didn't know that right off the top. I found that a little bit later in from another person who was involved in nutrition as well. Well, Steve, you brought up a very interesting point that, in my opinion, a lot of people overlook, that people could be guzzling down calories mindlessly. They're only thinking about the food, perhaps, and just forget about whatever the calorie count, the sugar count. Isn't it true that there's something like eight tablespoons of sugar per glass of soda? I thought I heard that someplace. It was horrendously. Um, the last time I looked at a twelve ounce, a twelve ounce. Well, we'll go even more. We'll go. We'll go a sixteen ounce bottle of Coke. The last time I checked it, it was closer to ten teaspoons of sugar. <gasps> not forty. Oh. So just think every time you go to open a bottle of soda and you unscrew it and you drink and ah, it's so refreshing. Think about all that sugar and that phosphoric acid and everything you're taking in. Um, soda's the worst. If you wanna know just how good a soda is, take about three or four tarnished pennies, put it in a cup or a glass, pour some Coke in it and let it set overnight and watch what happens. No. Just think what it just think what it's doing to the inside of your system. Oh, oh, that thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna have to try that for fun for once. <laughs> It'll give you a little bit of a. As they had, uh, there was a show that that was that was on back in the '80s when I was a child on Nickelodeon. It was called Mr. Wizard's World, and he used to do all kinds of different experiments and things. A little bit, a little bit scientific, a little bit like chemistry type, but you know, it, it was a, it was educational, but yeah, you need to try that sometime. Take a couple of three tarnished pennies, put it in a, a cup or a glass and fill it up about a third of the way or so and check it in about a day, maybe even less than a day, maybe a half a day and look and see how your pennies look. Oh, your pennies will come out nice because it's zapping away the tarnish. Think what it's doing to the inside of your digestive tract every time you drink it. That's pretty darn scary, that it is. Oh. When you think about what you're intaking, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, Steve, I have to ask you, what pivotal moment of your life had you decide that's it and you really mean business, and you're going to do this weight loss journey. Okay. When I went to this particular doctor that I went to, who you know, who knew, who knows homeopath, homeopathic medicine, she still practices to this day. You know, and she's also um, an ob, you know, an OBGYN doctor. Don't ask me how you have the two extremes, but that was her field. Uh, when she took me in to, you know, to check my pulse and my blood pressure and my vitals, and I saw 152 over 103 blood pressure, and my pulse was well up into the 90s, bumping on 100, in addition to the 321 pounds, that pretty much drew the line for me, because... Here I am, 29, headed toward 30 years old, and here I am having to make a life-changing decision. Either change my life, better my blood pressure, improve my weight, or mom and dad could go to the closest funeral home and prearrange my funeral if I would have stayed on that path. So I pretty much opted to go ahead and change my eating and drinking habits, get some exercise in there. I did some walking and I started taking the weight off and I changed my life that way. 
because I did have to go back and reteach myself how to eat and drink again. The right way, doing things in moderation, which I still do to this day. And I would like to add, my blood pressure is fine now. The wow. last time I had to go to the doctor on uh, last Wednesday, I had to get some medication because I wasn't feeling good, but I'm doing better now you know, since I've been on a little antibiotics and things like that. But my blood pressure came back uh, 124 over 83. Good. And I think my pulse was like 87 or 88, which is great. So it's a far cry from what I had back in the, in the early 2000s when I went and saw the doctor, you know. So... But that, but yes, to answer your question though, that would, that would have to be my pivotal moment when I saw my vitals and I made a life changing decision, whether to live or, you know, to boot, to be put six feet under, I was pretty much my, and I you opted. Your mind. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me, Steve, you mentioned a date earlier, a calendar date. Mm -hmm. Did that happen to be this date on this day, what you were talking about right now, that doctor appointment? Well, no, that was March 29th of 2004. Okay. No, we're in May. So no, it would not, or, or about to be June, but no, this was March 329.04 is when everything changed for me. That was everything. Um, it was just, it was just, I had to make the change either live or die. I had a choice. Yes. Well, Steve, I, I noticed it's not in the list of formal questions, mm -hmm. but what did you actually do? Like actually, cause you didn't get gastric bypass. You didn't, what no. was actually an eating plan for you? Well, here's what, here's what happened when I went and saw this particular doctor who covered homeopathic and I was going because of my eye at the time. I thought it was diabetic retinopathy. Come to find out it was totally different than that. But, you know, she, she had asked me, I don't think it was my first visit or maybe it was. She had asked me if I knew what my blood type was. So here I am as old as I, I, I never knew what my blood type was. I know what I always suspected it was because there was this blood type diet that she was wanting to put me on. I'd never heard of this diet. You eat certain foods under a certain blood type that you are and it's supposed to help you lose weight. Okay. So I wind up eventually going to this. Um, they have them around here and maybe you've heard of it too. It's called century ambulance. So I went in there and I had some blood work done. I had to fast and they did my, they did blood work and you know, a, a couple of three, four days had gone by and the test result had come in. Come to find out my blood type that I suspected a, I thought I was a B positive wasn't the case. Uh, the result came back as O positive. So when I went back and saw my doctor, she pulls out this paper and said, this is everything you should be eating on your type O diet. Okay. So I started out on that diet. I didn't completely agree with everything. And to this day, I still don't. Um, to, because I wanted to know more about it, I ordered two books from Amazon. It's called Eat Right for Your Blood Type. I'm not going to give away the author's name, but it's, it's out there. Right. Um, because of, you know, being on, on live. But I did that. But then I had to change my diet. My diet changed. I didn't stick with that. Then I wound up eating more vegetables, um, more baked foods, grilled. Um, I would eat steak. 
if I ate any carbohydrates, it would be like one one side. It'd be like rice or mashed potatoes or a baked potato. Um, of course, like I said, I changed my drinking habits. I started drinking iced tea half and half. At first, I had to have like flavored water of some type. So I did that. Eventually, it got to the point where I would switch to drink to nothing but unsweet tea with lemon or water with lemon. It got to the point to where I did that. Um, it took a few months, but I got to that point. And um, I just changed the way I ate. I gave up all fried food. I gave up all sweets. I gave up all sweets, although that was not the greatest thing in the world to do because I did wind up having a low sugar, a low sugar level because of that. And of course I ate a couple of three pieces of lifesavers. I dissolved them and that helped bring, you know, the, 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 the blood sugar number back up again. Um, but I eventually just didn't do the blood type diet. I also did a little bit of the Atkins. I mm -hmm. did. I also did another diet called the South Beach diet. I did that for a little while. But what I wound up doing, though, is I took the blood type, the Atkins, and the South Beach, and I basically took the three diets, and I combined them. Yeah. And for some reason, I was able to make the diet work for me. That's great. Um, there's nothing wrong. I have nothing against the Atkins diet as it is a very strict diet because you're only allowed to eat certain things. Mm -hmm. You can't have any starches. You can't have any bread. Um, I think you're only allowed to have meat, cheese, eggs, low carb, anything, low carb nuts, but anything on the higher carb side, you can't have it. No. So, Steve, did you count calories, too? What I, I was really more of a calorie counter than I was a carb counter. Uh-huh. To this day, I still eat anywhere between a 1,250 and 1,300 calorie diet a day. Okay. To this day, I still eat within that. And, yes, I still count my calories. I try to stay well within those limits. Not so much carb, although carb is something I'll look at. Oh, to give me an idea and let it go with that. Yeah. Um, but more so, I do tend to revolve around the car, no, not the carbs, but the, the, the calorie take intake. Steve, do you have like a best tip that I understand you have some before pictures, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, I've got a couple of three here that I've. And, and with that, do you happen to have a best tip that? worked for you? I mean, not that you're telling anybody what to do, but what did you find worked the best for you? Mm. Let me see. I'm trying to think. Um, well, <clears throat> I would have to say when you're on a diet, or you're trying to lose weight like I did. It is mental. Yeah. If you hit plateaus, don't give up. You may be on a plateau. You may be there a week or two. Eventually, you're going to start. Don't give up. Stay with it. Eventually, you will break yourself of the plateau and you'll start. But I would say don't give up. Don't let them, don't let the plateaus, you know, defer you from trying to lose weight. That's one thing. And two, do things in moderation. They say, oh, but I'm not allowed to have a piece of chocolate cake or I'm not allowed to have any ice cream or that's not true. I have a little secret and I've shared it before. I'll do it again with the ice cream. If you go to your ice cream or go to the refrigerator or freezer, pull out your ice cream, take the lid off, you have a tablespoon. It has to be it has to be a tablespoon. And you'll like my trick. Get a tablespoon of ice cream. Let it be a little bit on the heaping side. 
out of that tablespoon, you may get four bites out of that. May, may on an average three, but you might get four. Eat it slow. Let your taste buds know that you're getting it. You just ate four bites of ice cream, and it's, an, it's also enough to satisfy the craving or a desire for something sweet. I like that idea. It's not about deprivation. It's no. About, yeah. That's it's, what your success was. Not to mention you virtually threw away soda from your life. I did. Yeah, here I am, what, 17 years, two months and two days later, and I'm still, like I said, I do club soda, seltzer water, you know, like buble water or polar, you know, like cherry, different blackberry, different fruit flavor that's zero calorie. Right. That's, I'll drink, a, I'll, I'll usually drink about one a day. Um but, I, but that's, you know, and of course I do, of course I drink Gatorade, I drink water, uh, iced tea. I still do things like that. But the soda is a, is, a, is a distant memory for me. And I tell people all the time, if you can get away from it, stay off of it and don't drink it again. Only because of, only because of, of what I dealt with and what I what I know about it. It's a dang, it's a, it's actually a dangerous beverage to drink. It's not, it's not anything good for you. No. You never seemed like you missed it in any way, shape, matter or form. And you could get your bubble action with the seltzer. Yes. And it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. Steve, did you feel physically, I mean, did you like feel noticeably physically improved when the weight was coming off? Oh, absolutely. I started to feel better about myself. My frame could withhold, you know, my weight better. Um, it was a, as the weight was coming off, I did see, I did, I did notice, you know, less baggage on me, you know, and, um, but, but yes, you will see an improvement as you're removing the weight. Five pounds, 10 pounds, 15, 20, 30. And as you take this weight off, yes, you do notice that you do notice uh, quite a bit of an improvement. Well, you are a story with a happy ending and an ongoing. It's an ongoing journey. It's never a journey that quite closes. Am I right? No, because right now I'm not at my lowest weight. I did I did eventually get down to 208, but that was in 2016. But I had a lot going on that year too. Uh, that's another story within itself. But right now I'm not at my highest weight. I'm not at my lowest. I'm probably right around 253. Although because of the way my frame and the way my body is set up, most people don't see that I'm way overweight. It's the way, you know, the way the, the weight is distributed throughout my body. Um, but if I may, if you would, if you want, I can show you these three pictures. They're oh, not, please. They're, I'd not, love to see them. they're not any, they're not recent, but. Let but me if, follow layout. Yeah. So let me start here. This would have had to have been sometime in, 1998. I don't think I was 321 pounds. I was probably like 305 or 307. Mm -hmm. I was well over 300 pounds in this picture. Okay. That's one. Um, here's another one, maybe a couple of years prior. I'm not really sure about my weight. I mm -hmm. would say in my, I would say like somewhere around 285, 290 here maybe mm -hmm. this is in an old mobile home we used to live in many years ago yeah um and then this is probably sometime in 98 this would have to be along the lines of the first one that i showed yeah wow oh yeah i'm probably you know same general area right around 290 295 give or right. take 
Do you have a number for a goal weight? Is there any fixed number or? Not really. I've already hit my goal. I'm not there now. Like I said, I've had some things happen to me in the last couple of years that was unexpected. Um, I, I know, well, I, like I said, I hit 208 about four and a half, five years ago, but I would have to say my comfort zone weight wise would have to be somewhere around 220, 223. So I'm not too far out. I'm maybe about 28, 30 pounds off. Right. So. You are still quite far away from that original starting point. And your main thing, your blood pressure is down. You see, you said something very early in the broadcast that you changed the way you thought because that's where it begins, the way you think. Am I right? It is the way you, it, it has to do with the way you think. Well, Steve, I want to thank you so much for sharing your story of success in this area. I do so much appreciate it. I really do. Oh, believe me, it's, um, it's my pleasure. Like I said, I, I, I don't mind letting, you know, your subscribers know about, you know, some of the things that I've had to deal with in my life. Like I said, I'm about to be, I'll be 47 in October. And, um, but since then, I have been up and down the ladder. Nowhere near I nowhere near what I originally was. I don't ever intend to go back there. But <clears throat> as long as I stay two fifty ish and below, I usually have no problem. You know, bringing the weight down a little bit as I need it. I don't feel too bad off in my two, in, being in the two fifty low to middle two. I don't feel too bad. Like I said, I do know what I have to do to take this weight off. Like I said, I've, I've done it off and on so much in the last 17 years. Um, and it doesn't always necessarily mean I have to go out and walk two and a half, three miles, although that doesn't hurt. A lot of it has to do with changing the way you eat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I so appreciate it, and I'm sure so many viewers do too. Please head over to the Steve Young 74 channel. He has a wonderful channel, and uh, I love being a guest on your show. Just mm -hmm. saying, just saying. Yeah. We've too. had a lot of good times, and thank you for your time. It's very mm -hmm. valuable. I appreciate it. Everyone have a wonderful evening, and thanks so much for tuning in. Until the next time, let's find out about another person's success story. Have a great evening. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome.